Hey guys, this week I'll be giving away a few tips and tricks that may help some beginners. You might find that some of these are obvious if you've had a play around in cake decorating, but hopefully you might find something useful. Some of these I didn't know when I started out. Okay, so the first tip is let your cake settle. You've taken it out of its tin, placed it on the wire rack, and now it feels cool to the touch so it's ready to decorate, right? No, the cake will actually change in texture even after it's cooled. A bit like you leave meat to rest, you leave your cake to settle. I pop mine under a Tupperware cake dome, mostly overnight, or you can wrap it in cling film. The structure of the sponges will change, which can affect the height of the cake. If you've been decorating your cakes straight from them cooling and finding the filling has bulged, the sugar paste has cracked or it's gathered around the bottom after a while, then this might be why. Just be a little more patient with it. Number two, clean up your edges. I always get asked, how are your cakes so neat? Well, they're not fully neat, but one thing that does help massively is just cleaning up the edges from your cutters. I know this sounds super obvious, but when you're in the throes of decorating as a beginner, the excitement to see a cake come together can make it easy to overlook small details, such as frayed edges from cutters. Just slow down, take a step back, and take that extra time to perfect that shape. Use your fingers to clean away the bits of paste or rub your cutter on a foam pad to buff them away. If the bits are persistent, once you've popped your shape from the cutter, trim it with a scalpel. It will make a difference, I promise. Number three, bubble tea straws. These things are awesome. When I first started cakes, I used wooden dowels or then the solid white poly dowels that were quite expensive. But then I discovered these. They are super cheap, easy to cut, strong, and how can you say no when they come in so many colours? I stack all my cakes with these, yes, even the 40 tier cakes that spend hours on car journeys. As they are hollow, the cake collects inside the hole, rather than the solid dowels which would just push the cake elsewhere inside. As a loose rule, I tend to use one more straw than the size of the cake being stacked above it. So if I had an eight inch cake, with a six inch cake going on the top, I'd use one more than the six inch, making that seven straws in total. If I had a seven inch cake with a five inch being stacked, I'd use six straws. I also like to colour code the straws just because I'm a super geek. If it's a chocolate cake, I like to put in straws that can easily be seen, such as yellow. And for the lighter cakes like vanilla, I'll add green or red. I'll pop a link below for the straws. Game changer for me because they're so cheap and they do the job perfectly. Four, acetate smoothers. If I told you when I started decorating that I thought a cake smoother was just a waste of money and I'd just used my hands, you would have rolled your eyes, but that's exactly what I thought. Those hard plastic cake smoothers, what a rip off, I don't need them. Until I got one and I was like, all right, okay, this does make a difference. There's a step up from that, an acetate smoother, or as some call it, a flexi smoother. These are thin sheets of plastic that allow you to buff out imperfections such as holes, cracks and fingernail prints where your hand just involuntarily attack that perfect finish you spent the last 20 minutes on. Not only do they fix that, but they are also the secret to the sharp edge that started trending and never went away. You push the paste together at the top between the smoothers held at a right angle and keep smoothing until it creates that razor sharp edge. I do kind of miss that old English curved edge though, you know, just because it was quicker and less painful. Number five acupuncture needles. Oh those pesky air bubbles, they pop up everywhere. Sometimes when rolling the paste out, sometimes when smoothing the paste onto the cake and sometimes an hour later when you thought you were done with smoothing. You could pop them with a scalpel, a cocktail stick, a scriber tool or a regular pin but they all make rather large holes. An acupuncture needle is super thin, honestly they don't feel it when you've got one stuck in your fingertip but they are and they leave such small holes that you either can't see them or they can be buffed away within a second. They also come in handy for holding stencils or paper onto a cake. When you remove them, the hole is barely noticeable. Just one tip though, once popping the bubble on a covered cake, wipe the needle after each pop, as sometimes you can leave little brown ganache holes on the next bubble. Number six, paper transfer. We are all pretty good at eyeballing up lettering on a board. Is it central? Is it even? We can move them about a little before sticking them down. But what if your lettering is on the front of the cake? What if it has to go in a very specific place or height? What you need to do is grab a piece of greaseproof paper and veg fat like Trex. Line up your lettering just how you want it to appear and add Trex generously to the paper. 
Lower it over the lettering, making sure each letter is stuck. Carefully flip it over and add water to the backs of your letters. Now you can hold the whole name up in one piece and press it onto the cake exactly where you want it. The Trex simply buffs away. 7. Last but not least is the pasta machine. Hopefully from watching my tutorials you'll have picked up on the fact I try to use my hands, basic tools or household items wherever I can. Starting with only second hand baking tins, a collection of old piping tips and a very well loved sewn up piping bag from my nan, I was very frugal with baking tools. I very rarely buy into the new gadgets unless I know it's going to make my decorating quicker. A pasta machine was one of those gadgets. I can quickly and easily roll out my paste to even thicknesses every time, which comes in handy when you want all your 1000 windows to be all the same. It also rolls paste out super thin, which lends itself to those pesky tappet cutters or for flower petals. Most pasta machines also have a taglitelli and spaghetti attachment. Oh my god, what a lifesaver for stripes and all those swords on the Iron Throne. In true frugal little cherry style, I bought the cheapest machine at around £20 and it does the job for me. I'll pop it in the description box. If you want something a little fancier, KitchenAid do one for their mixers. I'll give him one day and I'll have an electric one. That's it, I hope this video has been useful. Again, a lot of it may seem like common sense now, but looking back, I didn't know half of this when I made my first cakes, especially when I was stacking cakes without even one dowel inside. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and possibly share it with someone who you think would like it too. Thanks guys, bye.